This is a summary of Not Today, a book by Erica Schultz and Mike Schultz. During Ari Schultz's five short years in this world, he spent 430 days in the hospital and underwent countless surgeries, including an unsuccessful heart transplant. Throughout the harrowing ordeal, his parents, Erica and Mike Schultz, had to keep their business going and care for two younger children. They became time management gurus through necessity. The Schultzes developed a nine-step productivity system by studying extremely productive individuals. Their system can help you achieve your goals and find your purpose, despite life's slings and arrows. Let's hear the first takeaway. Loss taught a young couple that time is a scarce commodity. That lesson led them to develop their productivity code. Erica and Mike Schultz were a young couple with a new house and a budding business when life got tough. They struggled to conceive, and Erica's first pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. When she got pregnant again, an ultrasound revealed that their baby boy had a congenital heart defect. Baby Ari underwent two complex surgeries in utero to correct the defect, and he was born on February 16, 2012. In his five short years, Ari spent 430 days in the hospital undergoing several surgeries before passing away on July 21, 2017. During this time, Erica and Mike had to keep their business running in order to maintain their health insurance. Due to a mold problem, they had to demolish and rebuild their home. And they had to continue to be good parents for Lexi and Eli, Ari's siblings. Erica and Mike had to produce and achieve no matter how exhausted or emotionally drained they felt. When Ari died and their brightest light went dark, they needed to rediscover their purpose and rebuild their lives. Okay, here's the second takeaway. Classify your time into four categories. Treasured time, engaging in activities you love. Investment time, working towards your goals. Mandatory time, doing chores. And empty time, doing nothing of value. Ari's illness forced Erica and Mike to be strict about using their limited time. They realized that productivity isn't a matter of doing more or working harder or smarter, but doing the right things and focusing on your priorities and purposeful tasks. After extensive research and interviews, the Schultzes devised their productivity code. Before you use it, they advise identifying your most meaningful, important tasks. To increase your productivity and happiness, consider your purpose, the why, your actions, the what, and your tactics, the how. To remain on the path to fulfilling your goals, continually assess and define what matters to you. Classify your tasks and activities into four categories. First, treasured time. Time spent on activities you savor, notably those with people you love. Second, investment time. Time focused making significant progress toward your goals. Third, mandatory time. Day to day activities such as household chores and administrative tasks that must be done but lack meaning and could be delegated or outsourced. And fourth, empty time. Wasteful time such as scrolling through social media and procrastinating. Don't confuse empty time with downtime, which is beneficial revitalizing time. Erica and Mike surveyed 2,377 respondents worldwide and identified three groups. Extremely productive people, XPs, even higher-level productivity gurus, XP champions, and the rest, those who aren't particularly productive. Extremely productive people spend almost six hours per day engaged in investment time, whereas the rest only spend only four hours. So in an average five-day work week, productive people find some nine extra hours to work toward their goals. Moreover, they spend 21% less time than non-productive people on mandatory activities, and they waste 37% less empty time. While two-thirds of XPs say they can take as much treasured time as they want, fewer than 50% of the rest make that claim. Here's another takeaway. The Productivity Code is a nine-step time management system that considers your purpose as well as your tasks and tactics. People who are deliberate about spending their time can enjoy more treasured time, build up investment time, minimize mandatory time, and eliminate empty time. To use your time this carefully, 
turn to the productivity code, which is made up of three keys, each containing three habits. First, manufacture motivation. This includes recruit your drive, ignite your productivity, and re-engineer your habits. Second, control your time. This key includes obsess over time, say no, and play hard to get. And third, execute in the zone. This covers sprint into the zone, fuel your energy, and right the ship. Time for the fourth takeaway. First, recruit your drive to emulate extremely productive people. Motivation is not innate. You can learn to develop it. Three-quarters of the XPs feel driven. Additionally, drive is the second most common trait among the world's happiest people. The XPs are much more likely than other people to write their goals, create weekly plans, and hold themselves accountable for the results. Three hacks can help you harness your drive. Your drive accumulates when you make a personal choice, not when you have a decision thrust upon you. Picture a desired future state. Decide to change something to make that vision a reality. Write your goals as a pledge to your commitment. Second, plan actions weekly. Clarify your tasks to muster motivation. Carve your annual goals into smaller manageable pieces. Identify top priorities. Divide the year into four quarters and list what you need to accomplish in the current quarter to reach your annual goal. Divide this quarter into three one-month segments and assess what you must prioritize this month to achieve the quarter's goals. Finally, divide the month into four weeks and define this week's activities in relation to your monthly goal. And the third hack is track progress weekly. To strengthen your intrinsic motivation, hold yourself accountable. Share your goals with others and enlist their support to remain on task. Let's move on to takeaway number five. Second, ignite your proactivity to get started. The first step is the toughest part of any project, especially for the 20% of people who are chronic procrastinators. To overcome procrastination, focus on your greatest impact activity, the most valuable thing you can do with your time, and put it on your calendar. You're more likely to follow through on a task if you schedule it. Tackle your high-impact activity first thing each morning. Once you start, eliminate distractions and focus solely on this effort for a set amount of time. Your self-talk can hold you back or propel you forward. Take command of your inner critic to boost your confidence and positive attitude. Once you rein in negative self-talk, launch yourself into action. Simply say to yourself, 3, 2, 1, go, and then plunge in. It may feel silly, but it's effective. Okay, let's continue. Here's takeaway number six. Third, re-engineer your habits to eliminate unproductive behavior. Habits, your acquired, almost involuntary routines, are tough to break. Many self-help gurus define the habit loop as trigger response reward. To break an unproductive habit, add a fourth element thought to that loop between trigger and response. For example, if you want to stop checking your phone every few minutes, think in advance about what you could do differently. When I feel my phone buzz in my pocket, trigger, then I will turn off that alert, thought response, before doing anything else. Once you execute a new behavior enough times, your response becomes automatic. Then persevering will require less willpower. Another effective habit hack is to change your environment. For instance, declutter your desk or shut your office door to rein in your focus. Finally, introduce a five-step morning routine. One, read your objectives to focus on your daily priorities. Two, review your mood and state of mind. Three, ask, will I, to make sure you complete your high-priority activities. Four, think about how you can improve on yesterday. And five, Dive into your highest impact activity. We've reached the seventh takeaway. Fourth, obsess over time and be deliberate about allocating your hours. To control your time, start with obsessing over how you use it. Workers spend an average of 4.3 hours, almost half of every workday, on mandatory and empty activities. Keep a time log for two days to learn precisely how you spend your time. This will help you identify the changes you need to make. 
To optimize your time, take treasured time with family and friends. Engage in your favorite hobbies. Increase your investment time, which gives you the greatest return on your hours and keeps you on course toward your goals. Convert mandatory time into investment time by, for instance, scheduling work calls during your commute or delegating errands. Eliminate empty activities like unnecessary meetings. Now let's hear takeaway number eight. Fifth, say no to low-priority requests so you stay on track toward your goals. If you're very busy but not making progress toward your goals, refuse any request that doesn't contribute to your priorities. Declining requests is hard, but if you practice saying no in low-stakes situations, you'll grow accustomed to it. Keep a to-don't list. List tasks you won't do to free your time for your priorities. Your to-don'ts will change with time or circumstances. Pare down your priority list so you're not stretched thin. Remember, if you're not gung-ho, say no. Time for the next takeaway. Sixth, play hard to get to resist distractions and interruptions. To own your time, make it hard for other people to commandeer it. Technology-enabled distractions abound, and few people can resist the siren call of a smartphone alert. Yet disruptions have a high cost. It takes more than 23 minutes to get back on task following a distraction. XPs use three tactics to resist interruptions and remain focused. First, be free from the shackles of alerts. Turn off alerts. Log out of distracting applications, silence your ringer, and disable push notifications. Receiving texts, tweets, and the like gives you a feel-good dopamine kick, but you'll feel better and become more productive when you lose the distractions. Second, signal do not disturb. To protect your focus, find ways to transmit a do not disturb message, such as shutting your office door or activating your online out-of-office message. And the third tactic is be someplace else. Many people find they are more focused and creative when they change location. Try a quiet corner in a conference room, the local coffee shop, or your home office. All right, let's hear takeaway number 10. Seventh, sprint into the zone by immersing yourself so deeply in an activity that you lose track of time. The zone is a mental state of such productive, full engagement that you lose track of time, according to psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. A major differentiator between XPs and the rest is that XPs excel at getting into the zone. Often people associate the term the zone with athletes or creative workers, but the zone is available to anyone. Try these techniques. First, sprint. Time sprinting is a proven method for getting and staying in the zone. To use it, focus single-mindedly on a designated activity for 20 to 90 minutes, then take a break. Second, relay. Four time sprints in a row with a six-minute break in between make up a relay. And third, keep a distraction capture list. When a stray thought pops into your head during a sprint, make a note and address it later. Okay, time for another takeaway. Eighth, fuel your energy to build stamina as you become more productive. Fueling your energy and stamina is essential for high productivity. When you're fatigued, emotionally spent, or overwhelmed, recharge your batteries by balancing the energy triad of mind, body, and spirit. To nurture productive stamina, follow this formula. First, mind. Take advantage of your morning energy peak by dedicating mornings to concentrated effort. Minimize decision-making and practice mindfulness. Second, body. Eat and sleep well and exercise regularly. And third, spirit. Prioritize treasured time, engage in meaningful activities that provide spiritual sustenance, and get out of the house or office to enjoy your natural surroundings. Now for the twelfth and final takeaway, the ninth step. Right the ship when you veer off course. You may slide off track from time to time, allowing low-impact activities and procrastination to sideline your focus. Three tactics can help you right your ship. First, practice free won't. Between trigger and a response, such as the urge to check social media, is a millisecond pause during which you can choose to reject that impulse. To practice using your free won't, say to yourself, three, two, one, stop. 
to neutralize a distraction. Second, make a micro change. If you're struggling to get started or stick with a project, break it down into progressively smaller pieces until the goal is achievable. For example, if the idea of even a 20 minute sprint is overwhelming, start with a five minute sprint. As you accumulate successes, you'll build confidence and stamina. That's the power of micro changes. And the final tactic is make a commitment contract. Research suggests that when you commit to a goal in writing, such as quitting smoking or staying off social media, and when you enlist the help of an accountability partner, you significantly increase your odds of success. And the payoff is more treasured time. That was a summary of Not Today, a book by Erica Schultz and Mike Schultz. Here's the 12 takeaways one more time. Takeaway number one. Loss taught a young couple that time is a scarce commodity. That lesson led them to develop their productivity code. Takeaway number two, classify your time into four categories. Treasure time, engaging in activities you love. Investment time, working toward your goals. Mandatory time, doing chores. And empty time, doing nothing of value. Takeaway number three, the productivity code is a nine-step time management system that considers your purpose as well as your tasks and tactics. Takeaway four, First, recruit your drive to emulate extremely productive people. Takeaway five. Second, ignite your proactivity to get started. Takeaway six. Third, re-engineer your habits to eliminate unproductive behavior. Takeaway number seven. Fourth, obsess over time and be deliberate about allocating your hours. Takeaway eight. Fifth, say no to low-priority requests so you stay on track toward your goals. Takeaway nine. Sixth. Play hard to get to resist distractions and interruptions. The tenth takeaway. Seventh, sprint into the zone by immersing yourself so deeply in an activity that you lose track of time. Takeaway eleven. Eighth, fuel your energy to build stamina as you become more productive. And the final takeaway. The ninth step. Right the ship when you veer off course.